Hi and welcome everyone, this is Hobo Prepper, I am Friar Tuck. Okay, I probably look like shit and I'll explain it to you here in a second, but I wanna, I, I'm gonna share with you some clips that I took while I was out in the woods for the last couple of days. Um, and uh, I gotta tell you, uh, one thing I, I wanna say is, look, uh, my parents should have taught me some of the stuff that, that I'm doing right now, but they didn't. So uh, don't make fun of me <laughs> because of some of these things I'm learning, not just for the first time, but I'm kind of uh, trying to understand it in from a more of a technical stance, like, you know, fire, wh wh how to use it, this and that and the other. So don't laugh at me too hard. I mean, you can laugh at me, but just be nice about it, okay? So uh, let me kind of give you some uh, 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 an update on this and kind of why I look like crap. Um, if you can't tell, and yes, I just took a shower, so I probably look less like crap than I did because I was completely covered in mud. Um, <coughs> so I left JR. It was like three um, because I, I basically got two hours of sleep the night or four hours of sleep the night before. I decided that I would um, just go to the first campsite and from that first campsite, uh, I would I would launch into the next couple of days of being on the road, so on and so forth. Uh, I kind of already had an idea of where I was going and what I was doing because of the talk that I had with the previous uh, guy, which uh, once that video is finished uploading, because signal is really crappy out here. I'm in Crawfordville right now, but and I'm even right along the side of a freeway and I'm still getting, you know, two bars, which really kind of sucks. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing is, is he did a road walk. He skips parts of the trail because he's been doing it for so long. He just, you know, he does part of the trail. He, he sleeps on the trail. He, he walks the trail, but from time to time he jumps into cities to get resources and stuff like that so he wasn't really able to tell me what i had coming at me and i kind of wish he would have i probably would have skipped it myself because um you know on, on one hand i learned some important lessons i learned what i'm really made of uh on, on one sense because uh all right so you'll see this in the footage like I, I walk in and just as i get into the forest i'm going through knee-high water puddles uh, i'm trying to go around it at first but there's no way around it eventually and yeah i'm knee deep in it my my boots are about waterproof up until about halfway up the boot then it starts getting in there so you know by the time i got to the campsite i was like oh man uh it's it's good it's fantastic you know i can wring it out day's still young i can dry my stuff out uh it was overcast so none of, nothing actually dried i'm still trying to dry out my laundry because i took the time i was like okay i got extra time i'm gonna do my laundry but um, the, I gotta say, when I walked in there, I wish I would've taken a picture of it, but it says, you know, on this trail, uh, you know, those who come on this trail, uh, you know, you will deal with treachery and, uh, and danger. And uh, I think the, the other thing was uh, the majestic scene and I hope your journey is great. It's a quote from somebody. Well, uh, I was just thinking, oh wow, that's a neat quote. No, 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 that's telling you what you got ahead of you. So uh, whoever would, thought that they would be Mr. Smart Guy decided that they would, uh, that they would put the first campsite, which uh, quite frankly, if you ever go, so when you leave JR, until you get to Crawford Lil, um, you should plan on just making it straight through. Don't even stop. Don't don't anything. Even if you got to walk through the night until until you get to the the levee. Once you get to the levee, that's the majestic part. Oh, it's so beautiful. I actually um, uh, here at the campsite I'm at, I got a ride into town to uh, to Dollar General, so I, I got some food. But and I'm going to go back the eight miles back to the levee, and I want to I want to show it to you because it is probably one of the most majestic things. Because uh, while I'm walking through the trail, I'm just sitting there going, "Why the hell am I doing this?" You know, um, the first campsite was like in the middle of a mosquito nest. There must have been ten thousand mosquitoes, if not more. Um, all night long, I got like two hours sleep because I was sitting there trying to hide under my blanket. It's only sixty degrees, and at sixty degrees, it's too warm for my my sleeping bag. And so I, I, it wasn't until later on that I switched up under my blanket and I actually got some sleep. Um, I, uh, you know, it was in the middle of a mosquito nest. It sucked. I was, I got like two hours sleep. I got under my blanket finally, and it was cool enough to where I could actually get to sleep and hide under my blanket because it's like all you hear all night long. It doesn't matter how many mosquitoes you killed. I probably killed a couple hundred mosquitoes. I mean, there was one I had, I had four right there on my elbow. And they were, it was like they were here to, at a bench, you know, getting ready to sit there and, and suck my blood. And I, like, I killed all four of them. And like, next thing you know, I, I I wake up in the morning, I've got like eight of them that I killed that are just like, like some on my legs, some on my arms, like pop, 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 And the thing is, it's just more keep coming. If I didn't, you know, if I wasn't keeping moving, it would have been, it would have been something else. So, um, you know, I'm sitting there just, I'm pissed. I'm just, I'm yelling. I, I'm, I'm cursing creation itself going, what the hell have you done to me? Why would you create something so vicious? I mean, it was like I was being eaten alive by mosquitoes. And, um, you know, and then I, I go further along in the trail. And I'm like, okay, well, hopefully, you know, the waters die down a little bit, so there won't be as many puddles. No, I was, I didn't realize I was sludging through swamps and and through the sludge and like knee deep, uh, you know, ankle deep in certain. Ends. When I showed up here at this campsite, you know, luckily you guys had sent me enough money to where I could afford a, a primitive campsite here, which is like 15 bucks. Um, you know, because of all of that, uh, you know, I'm just, I, I, I'm like, I need a shower, and I need, I need to clean off because I mean, I was covered, literally covered in mud, and I'm just sitting there going, I'm so angry, I'm just like, I'm so, <laughs> it's the only thing keeping me going because I just, otherwise, I would have been so tired, I would have, I probably would have fallen out once I got to the levee. I just said, screw it, I'm going without, and uh, 
you know, and so I finally get to the levee, and it's like, this is absolutely majestic. It's the most beautiful thing I've seen. My phone is dead, so I can't take any video or pictures of it. That's why I'm going back. Uh, maybe uh, I might stay here another day because I gotta tell you some more stuff that happened. But um, you know, you know I, I'm when I get back on trail, I'm going to I'm gonna go back to the levee, and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take some video footage of it because it's to me it's, it's one of the most beautiful things that I ever saw. So all my anger, all my frustration, it's like okay, now I get what the side was saying. It wasn't it wasn't a quote. It was reality of what I was about to face. Because I'm sitting there going, man, next time I come through here, I'm skipping this part. There's no way in hell I'm doing it. And you know what? I, I might hold true to that. Um, but once you get to those levees, it was just, it was so beautiful. But the thing is, is I started out in the morning because uh, what because I'm like right close to the ocean, I can't filter any water. And because I can't filter any water, um, you know, I'm basically, I'm like, okay, so I drink my, I, I drink my, my one big water bottle and I drink half of the other one and I kind of ration myself and I'm like, okay, I'll do fine that way. Then, sorry about the wind guys, I'll try and fix it. But then from that point, um, you know, I'm, I go like maybe two hours into the trip. I'm out of water already. I've already drinking all 40 ounces. Cause I mean, I'm sweating. It's, it's overcast, but it's warm and I'm sweating and ugh, it was just, it was something else. And so, you know, um, by the time I get to the end of the levee, which is about mm, eight, nine miles later, uh, my hands are swollen. Um, my my, I mean, I can barely, I could barely, barely close them. I'm sitting there going, oh, man, I hope it wasn't from all those mosquito bites. I hope I didn't catch something from them. It might be dehydration. So I see a guy, and I'm like, hey, you got any water? And he's saying, he's like, no, but I got this. And so he gave me a warm Maui Mountain Dew, which I, at that point in time, I didn't care what it tasted like. He's like, I sucked that thing down like like nobody's business. And uh, you know, and I had my, I had the soda. I'm like, good, at least I got the calorie count. And it really didn't do much. It wasn't until until I got here, um, I was able to hydrate myself. And then uh, one of the campers, because she's also a YouTuber, and um, I, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link to her channel down in the description. She does travels, cruises, stuff like that. If you're into that type of thing, and you know she does in a motorhome and, and stuff like that. If you're into that type of thing, go over there, check her out. Um, but you know she's she's struggling as a YouTuber, so I gave her some advice, you know, things that I've learned, so on and so forth. And then for in exchange, she gave me a she gave me a ride down to the store, which I truly truly appreciated. Um, and uh, uh, you know very very kind people um, and very helpful and I truly appreciate the, the kindness that they showed me uh, but uh, you know I got some of that the Gatorade Pedialyte um, they call it Gatorade light and uh, I drink I drink half of that and I've drinking almost all of this um, plus I also drink a Gatorade bottle full of like tap water when I first got here um, my swelling has gone down I can move there's no issues I mean not even in this hand I mean it's a little bit of swelling still but um, not as much as it was when I first started because it was like it literally it looked like my hand was infected like my foot was like how it blew up and so yeah I suffered from dehydration and dehydration even though you have water you can still be dehydrated if you don't have enough water and that was an important lesson for me to learn so uh, just because you, you ration yourself out um, you may still suffer from dehydration if you go long periods of time uh, with limited amounts of water so that's something to be thoughtful and careful about um, something I wouldn't have actually thought about especially considering like I had 40 ounces of water my body should be fine yeah not only that I'm operating on like six hours sleep in two days and all I had for breakfast and I didn't eat for the rest of the day until I got here um, all I got for breakfast was a package of powdered donuts I like the little Debbie donuts it's what I like for breakfast. It's easy on my stomach, quick to go, and you know I can eat quickly and, and be on the road because I don't want to have to sit there and cook. I, I prefer to have my cooking for dinner, and you know have have my my breakfast be something quick and easy, simple. My my lunch be something just prepackaged, and then my dinner is what I'm going to put my effort into. Um, so tonight I'm going to have sausage dogs with chili uh, and call it my chili dogs. I love my chili dogs. If you if you don't like or if you one thing you'll learn about me is I love my chili dogs. So anyways. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm finally starting to feel good, but now I'm starting to feel the fatigue uh, come in. My feet are so sore because I, I, I was like, okay, I need to take a right here. And I thought that I could take a shortcut and uh, yeah, no, I ended up putting an extra 10 miles on my feet. Luckily, um, I was able to kind of offset that because as soon as I got on the road, man, I was putting my thumb up and I was, I was trying to get a ride, like three cars passed me by and then finally the fourth car stopped and he's like, okay, uh, where are you going? I'm like, I'm just going up to, I'm going up to the end of the road to the campsite, not very far. He's like, oh yeah, that's eight miles. I'm like, dude, I thought that was five. Oh, I don't think I would have made it tonight and I would have been in a world of hurt the next morning um, trying to get in here uh, I, I I would have but the thing is is about halfway up just walking that road there was a campsite or not a campsite but like a park um, like a, a park area and so I could have filled up water there and I probably would have been fine but I probably would have been stuck there for the night and then I would have I had to wait the next day to get up here to actually get my shower and I would have had to sleep 
covered in mud, which wouldn't have been fun. But anyways, that is my day. Enjoy the footage. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Come become part of the Patreon family. Uh, have a different conversation with me than we have over here. I'm actually about to make a Patreon video. Um, you know, and I want to welcome my newest Patreon subscriber. Thank you for joining. Um, and all of you who say that you're uh, the the uh, all the ten percent of you uh, in that survey that said that you subscribe to me because I'm awesome. I expect you to be over there and, and subscribe to to. Um, to to uh, to Patreon. I mean, five dollars a month. It's not a you know ten if you want the the live stream replays. And quite frankly, I think the live stream replays are the most valuable part of the the Patreon community because uh, you know you get access to it. You can keep going back to it, so on and so forth. And you also know the other ways you can help out through the tip jar or through the gear links. Um, so I will see you in the next video. Enjoy the footage. Hi and welcome everyone. This is the Hobo Prepper and I am Friar Tuck. So this is what the Florida Trail looks like after a rain. But I'm kind of trying to go around it. But luckily, see. I can't walk through the water and keep my feet dry, though, because of the, uh, I can walk through the water and keep my feet dry because of my boots. But if you look here, I'll show you, because this is what caused me to turn around and come to the other side, is you can't really see how deep it is, but it's probably about six inches deep of water, and I'm kind of walking through marshland, and, uh, man, well, it looks like I need to worry about keeping, see my feet are still dry as long as I don't splash too much. Well, not anymore. Ah, my feet are getting wet. Ah. So, ugh, fuck. This is the trail, and like, this whole trail has been, since I got back into the forest, it's been like this. I'm trying to stay out of the water as much as possible to keep my feet dry, and <clears throat> um, not uh, uh, not ruin my uh, my feet too much. Although it might do them some good to get a little bit wet, because this is freestanding water. So this right here. It's clear water, so if I needed to grab water, this is a better place, at least on the Florida Trail, to get water. Crap, did I get lost again? Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Find the orange blazes. Okay, so I'm supposed to take a left here. Okay. Man, sometimes this trail is not marked well, so i got to figure out which way I'm going. And, oh, there's another trail blaze. And as you see, it's more standing water, so it looks like I'm going to be trouncing through water and I'm just going to have to get used to my feet getting just a tad bit wet because of how deep this water is. I mean, it's going to the top of my boots. Yeah. Well, well, at least I got shorts on. So, anyways, guys, uh, this is just me starting out uh, after being at JR's. So, man, this is fun. Uh, I'm going across the river. I'm about to hit my campsite. But the water doesn't look as bad as the Swanee. This is kind of cool. So this is how I get into my campsite. As I cross through the river. And I go to the other side. So this is the river. <sighs> Just make sure you keep good footing when you're crossing these damn things. Okay. So now I gotta figure out. Okay. There's the blue mark. That is the spur trail. It's supposed to be about 100 feet off of the... 120 feet off. Oh, look. There's a bench. There is a fire spot. Looks like I have found my camp spot for the night. So interesting. Uh, Alright. Just to show you how soaked everything got. That's why I basically only made it about seven miles today, but that's my sock that's soaked. And there are mosquitoes galore, plus I went knee-high deep in, uh, in water, which is good for my feet and everything. I got them washed. Um, but now I'm fighting damn mosquitoes. This is gonna suck tonight, but I kind of have to dry out, and it's, uh, I mean, it's overcast, and there's been some sprinkles here and there, so I hope I don't get wet tonight. But, oh well. Embrace the suck, right? So, there's, it looks like a little bit of a campfire. I just gotta make sure to uh, keep it from uh, from spreading. So, maybe do a little bit of a, of a trench around it. But, um, you know, and it looks like there's plenty of uh, fuel around here for me. So, anyways, guys, this is my first night um, back out on the trail after leaving JR's. Okay, so in Florida, we have mosquitoes. And as you see, the, the smoke is blowing right at me. Uh, I decided to place my bed in the way of the smoke so I don't have to worry about mosquitoes. And uh, I let my fire smolder. I generally don't build fires, but there were so many damn mosquitoes out here. It was like you kill 10 and 500 more show up. It's just, it's crazy. So one way to deal with mosquitoes if you don't want to use like bug spray and stuff like that is if you're in the path of like smoke like this, it will actually uh, keep the mosquitoes away because now they're no longer away. Um, I watched a video a while ago where a guy's like, yeah, you got to be right in it. And, you know, I... I you don't have to necessarily be right in it, but it does have to blow in your direction every so often just to kind of refresh it and remind the mosquitoes that, yeah, no, they can't come over here because there's all this smoke. So, as you see, I just, I've got it smoldering. Um, I did uh, take a moment and uh, I, I did 
dump it, uh, dump some water on it just because it, it was flaming and I wanted it to smolder. So, um, but as you see with the wind, it kind of keeps taking it, but it keeps coming right back here. I made sure to put my bed right in the path or the most common path that this thing goes. So anyways, just some food for thought. If you're ever out and you want to get rid of mosquitoes, um, or at least not deal with them, uh, this is the easy way and, uh, it's natural. And Hey, uh, if I want to get close to the, closer to the fire, it's warm too, but it's not going to be a cold night tonight. I'm still learning about fire. I mean, I really wasn't taught much other than, you know, be careful with fire, but to be able to use it as a tool, um, I think it's important. I don't think that it was, you know, at least this knowledge wasn't passed down to me how to be able to use it for more than just heating. So I'm back probably 20 feet from this, uh, from this fire and I'm still getting the heat radiating. Um, as you see, I did my laundry and I have been trying to dry it out all day. Well, um, it hasn't been drying very well. So, uh, I stoked up the fire. And, uh, another thing that I do is just because of, you know, being from Oregon, uh, you know, wildfires are a big thing. So what we try and do is always make sure that our fire is safe. So I have cleared an area around it and made sure that there's no fuel for it so that the fire can jump. Now, the wind has been, you know, crazy earlier in the day, but it's actually died down. As you see, it's not really blowing anywhere. The, the smoke is going straight up. But I've got the stuff that's dampest that I need to have dried quick next to the fire. Um, and I still have a decent distance so that it doesn't cause any issues. I don't want to lose my boots or my bag or my clothes because it catches on fire. But now I am able to... Um, dry out my clothes, even though the sun has gone down. So, uh, you know, I know for the average person, they may know a lot of this stuff, but for me, uh, this is new knowledge that I can use, uh, to make my life a little bit easier because it would have sucked to wake up in the morning and still have damp, uh, damp socks because, uh, with my socks getting soaked walking through those, uh, gigantic puddles that were up to my knee, uh, and having two pair of dirty socks because I hadn't taken the time to, uh, wash them because normally you wash one, you dry one. Uh, or excuse me, you wash it and dry it uh, the next day, and then that way you only need two pair of socks and you always got a fresh pair of socks. So in order to kind of meet my, my needs and stuff like that, I'm using the benefit of the fire. So just something neat, food for thought. If you guys didn't know this, then this might be knowledge for you if you already knew this. You know, I, I already know I'm not, I'm, I already know that when it comes to this lifestyle, uh, I, I'm not, uh, I, I still call myself the, uh, the, what was it, not the uh, dumbest hiker, but, um, I still call myself the worst hiker in the world because a lot of the stuff that I got to do when I was a kid, um, it didn't, it was just like when you're a kid, your parents do everything for you. You don't actually get an opportunity to learn unless your parents take you aside and teach you. So all this stuff that my parents should have taught me because we lived like this for many years. I mean, I lived six months on the side of a river and then six months in the back of a car when I was like five years old uh, because my stepdad lost his job. And so I would, but yet none of this knowledge was ever really passed down to me. Uh, you know, and it sucks when you're a city boy and you lived your youth in the country and, uh, and yet you don't really know the things that you're supposed to know. So again, I understand if you guys know this, but I don't, and I'm learning it and I'm also trying to make sure to master it so that I know how to use it to its fullest extent instead of just be like, okay, there's a fire. It's going to keep me warm. What other things can I use the fire for?